Do you remember when you did max min problems back when you first learned calculus? Remember those guys? There were those tests for a different type of Optima, first derivative test, second derivative test, all that kind of stuff. Well, let's recall and think our way through this from the perspectives that we have been learning. We're going to begin with a definition. In order to find extrema, maxes, mins, everything begins with the notion of a critical point. What's a critical point? Do you remember this? A critical point is an input at which the derivative is zero or is undefined. And you got to be careful. That condition, don't forget about that. That's going to be important whenever we have a function that is not differentiable, that has an endpoint, anything like that. But most of the time, what we're going to be interested in is critical points at which the derivative is zero. Now, there's also the notion of a critical value. That is an output whose input is a critical point. Don't get these two mixed up. The critical point, that's an input. The critical value, that is the output. In a lot of max min problems, what you're really looking for is a critical value. You're looking for the maximal profit. You're looking for the minimal cost. But in order to get there, you need to find the corresponding critical point that is itself a max or a min. Don't get those two confused. Critical point, input. Critical value, output. Now, why is this a thing? Why is this an important definition? Because if you're looking for a max, if you're looking for a min, you're really looking for critical points. Why? Well, the point is that the first derivative suffices to eliminate the presence of optima. This is the motivation for the definition of a critical point in terms of the derivative being zero. Why? The following lemma. If you've got a function f, one input, one output, it attains a local maximum or a local minimum at a point A only if that input A is a critical point. Now note, this says only if, not if and only if. Not all critical points are local maxes or mins. But, and if I may say so contrapositively, non-critical points cannot be local maxima or minima. That's what this is really saying. If you have a first derivative that exists and is non-zero, you do not have a local max or min. That is the content of this lemma. Now, why is this true? There are a number of ways that you can see this. Let's look at it from the perspective that we have been developing, from the perspective of Taylor expansion. If we've got a function f and a point a, at which we think there might be a local max or min, if we perturb away from it, if we look at f of a plus h, then what is this? This is f of a plus the derivative of f at a times h, plus higher order terms, terms that live in big O of h squared as h goes to zero. For small values of h, we can ignore those higher order terms, and we're left with the linearization of f at a. Now, if you're not at a critical point, then the derivative exists, so this is valid. And that derivative is non-zero. That means that that linear term has a non-zero coefficient in front of it. And that means you are not a local max or a local min. Now, of course, you can see this in terms of thinking of the slope of the tangent line, in thinking in terms of rates of change, lots of different ways to look at this. But I want you to make sure that you understand this result from the perspective of Taylor expansion, linearization. That is going to be what drives our further exploration of max-min problems.